All right, welcome to Pro Tour Honolulu. I'm Randy Bueller here with Brian David Marshall, and it is time for the Top 8 Booster Draft. We're going to be looking over the shoulder of Brian Kibler as he drafts the deck. He's going to be playing Players. with it this top eight. your A pack. Players Make are sure getting ready to open cards. the pack. Kibler is going to be feeding Paul Reitzel, Reitzel. his roommate. He's going to be picking up cards from Kazuya Mitamura, the, the hot Japanese player, on his right. Kibler, more pro points than anybody. All right, we're begin drafting. Second trick through the top eight. Couple of Grand Prix wins. He opens up a pack. Gets a look through it. There's an Oblivion Ring, Executioner's Capsule, Squire, Courier's Capsule, and... A Michaelis. A Michaeloth. What do you do? Michael, I, I it's Michaeloth or O-Ring, and you got to take Michaeloth, right? No, he's going to take Wow. Me. So, uh, oh, Kibler nice. Has shown all weekend long that he wants to be Esper. He wants to be Esper in Constructed. He wants to be Esper in Draft. And he's feeding his, uh, his housemate in Reitzel. And Reitzel, and he must know... Reitzel's going to put him in Esper, so he just shipped Michael off to his buddy. Right. That's what we saw. He's like, we're going to cooperate. And you can never go wrong with O-Ring. O-Ring is an awesome card. It's right. You can play it in Esper. You can play it in Night. You can play it in five color. Well, what kind of awesome signal does Reitzel get? I mean, you get shipped to Michael off, you know what's up, right? And Reitzel probably took... Oh, Kibler, Kibler opened a Tower Gargoyle. But if he's smart, he took... Uh, he took Skeleton Eyes or Magma Spray. Right. We'll have to find out what yeah, the uh, Paul's first know. pick on that draft. Paul's list. first pick is it? Think. I mean, you uh, can you can uh, sort of have this sense that you're going to cooperate with your friend, but you get down at that draft table and you're looking at the packs, and a lot of stuff goes out the window. Screecher looks like the best uh, Esper pick here. Let's see, he's going to want our Death Duelist. Death Duelist, I mean, you can still be uh, sort of Steward of Valor. Green, green lights a, a fine, uh, fine draft. Yeah, I like he's going to take the Death Duelist. He gets Absolutely. to have the Exalted guys. He gets to uh, still stay on Esper Colors. Sure. I mean, uh, Brian Kibler, more pro points than anybody in this tournament. 162. It's his second top eight. He's got eight GP top eights, two wins. I mean, this guy has been around the Pro Tour and doing well for a long time. Yeah, I thought it was interesting in uh, in, in Rich's preview piece. He said that uh, you know his that Brian's opponent was only probably the top was executioner's captain's captain with the highest picture. Was that uh, Conley Woods was only ten when Brian was winning. Grand Prix, Grand Prix Toronto. Toronto. Grand Prix Toronto. When Brian Kibler won Grand Prix Toronto, I had never played on the Pro Tour. That was a while ago. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and to be fair, Brian Kibler was only 18. Yeah, no, he was young. He, he was he was on tour as a high school kid. So we're really seeing him force a strategy here, right? Yes, the packs, absolutely. The packs have said Naya. Right, and Brian has said is, no. Uh, Okay, here's Lightning, Skimmer, Visionary, Mastodon. Wow. Mastodon, again, the, the nice really keep that. coming. He, this is not a great seat for Esper. He's, and he doesn't want to pass anything, he so he's thinking sages? about taking... Filigree like Sages, there's also a, a steel clad Serpent in there. I think he's going to take Sages. He's yep. looking at Death Baron as well. He's, he's not terrible. He's remaining on target. Right. And we said, when we sat down, we thought Reichel might have the best seat at this table, because he would know the draft preferences of his, uh, of his housemate on the right. No question, right? So that's the right. best seat now. Because Kibler's seat said Naya, but he didn't want to uh, didn't want to fight with his with his buddy. Right? He's seen a he's seen a Mike Roth, He's seen a hissing a Guanar. He just got you know a reasonably late Mastodon. Right, right. Yeah, I mean the best cards in the pack have consistently been Naya cards, and they're just they're flowing through to Paul. <laughs> Paul took first pick tower card. Well, these guys are going to be fighting today. <laughs> um, I mean, you also. I mean, how, how often you know you take a tower go and yeah, you can sit You get past the Michael off, you're probably going to move off of it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. There, there's I mean, was there anything else in the pack that would keep him? Oh, there was an Executioner's Capsule. <laughs> there was an Executioner's Capsule in that pack. Now, so Kibler's Esper, but is he is he blue-white Esper? Is he black-blue? I mean, black-white? The flexibility like really is that he can do a lot of stuff, right? He can be blue-white aggro with, you know, a couple of Esper cards. Right, Death Duelist says he wants to be blue-white. Right, Exalted. Uh, he can still end up being blue-black, where you take, you're taking, you know, Parasitic Strix and uh, Sidraxis Alchemist in the second pack. Right. And just sort of tempoing your opponent out. Yeah, I think he's probably leaning, thinking blue-white now mm-hmm. as opposed to black. It's part of the reason he ships the Death Baron. Right. Doesn't, doesn't want that. Death Duelist is only going to be able to consistently cast it if his blue and white is his base colors and black is the splash. Is it Paul Conceal? Yeah, I see. 
Dredge, uh, Dredge, uh, it's another steward. Dredge, uh, deny a seat. Deny a car. Dredge, so Sel- good here. Dredge, give, uh, Salton. It's gotta be calling him, right? He's looking at the archer? Not the archer. Archer. archers. Nope. Yeah, I mean, Dredge gives zombies decent. I would, I think it would call the hill, though. Because, like I said, I'm not sure he wants black as his base color. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for call to heal. Yeah, me too. Just so, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with it yet, but there's so many cards in conflict. He's thinking about, you know, that he doesn't have uh, any exalted cards yet, really. Uh, maybe take that. I, I can't imagine that he wouldn't get the uh, enough cards in that pack that he'd get the Dormary Archers back. Unlikely. More unlikely than the call to heal. That's certainly true. Yeah, so Those call to heal. Paul, if, if he was nigh, is taking a, a you know, druid, <laughs> it's a druid to the anima. <laughs> Kiss the Misha. Kiss the Misha is a fine card. Totally fine card. Off the white. It's a nice late druid of the anima for Paul. He went... Topolis, Tome of yeah, you know, we, we saw this, we followed a, if you watch the second draft view, you can watch the Sebastian Toller draft, uh-huh. where he was sort of being cut out of Vesper, and and, and you saw him, you know, have to play with some cards he wouldn't normally play with. He ended up, you know, he was siding in coma veils a lot, yeah. had like three coma veils, and he didn't waste any picks. Yeah, I would take and the cycles, cycle. right? And possibly take the obelisk in case you open up something good later that you want to splash, but... Yeah, I probably flip right. When in doubt, I'd, you just take anything that cycles mm-hmm. for Carlos. Wow, the lightnings are going around this there table. They really are. Is there no black red drafter? There must not be a black red drafter on this side. Like the ob- it's the second obelisk with black red. Would you would you have thought about going Grixis? And he's not seeing any white. He's not seeing anything resembling white. Yeah, he could have audible into Grixis here. He's like, what's his white? It's a death tool list, right? Right. Is it anything else? Oh, the O-Ring. No, he right. took first to get the O-Ring. It makes it really hard to go Grixis. It's a splash. It's pretty easily splash. But he just took the Obelisk of Grixis Grix here. Sure. Wave Skimmer even. So this is his pack back now. Sure. Take Skeletal Kathari. I don't think he's going to get the green. He would need for Wave Skimmer. Yeah, Skeletal Kathari. Pack has nothing. Take the Skullbarrow. Cap Cap is it Skullbarrow? He's looking at Skullbarrow. Yeah, that, that guy's ability, I think, is a drawback. <laughs> I think, I guess he's 1-3 three for 3, but the information you give your opponent, I think, is going to hurt you more than some random sure. ability. Randomly being I guess able to occasionally, he, with the border posts now, right, he gets the ability of the artifact oh, on top. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess. See a little these deck. Yeah. Uh, is he green white with the double steward, or is he red with the iguanas? Who knows? Uh, he, he certainly had out here. He's going to pick up a, a late dragon fodder. No. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, three cards left in the pack. One of them is dragon fodder. Yeah, the steel clad serpent came back That's around. Decent. I mean, it might be useful. It does indeed go serpent. Take condition. Here is the lightning talents. Last pick playable for Paul Reitzel. Again, I, I don't know if he's base red or if he's red, green, or green, white. I, 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 I would I I, imagine the way the packs went, he would be green, white, maybe with splash the double stewards. Yeah, yeah, a double too. stewards and a druid in the anima. Well, a druid goes either way. Druid's symmetrical. With stewards, definitely, so he wants to be base green, white, touching red, which is probably where he's at. Yeah. Red touch for. Should have a hissing with one or. Yeah, you can splash that guy. Certainly, if he took Magnus Bear Skeleton Eyes out of his first pack, that's a fine splash. It's All right, hard so to not take Tower Gargoyle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last pick still so 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 He's in a decent seat for blue, I guess. All right, let's take a look at what Brian's got. He can't be super excited about this deck at this point, but pack two is where he should get paid off. Right? Reitzel should be returning the favor in the second pack because they are clearly cooperating. And so much of this format seems to be about what happens in that third Yeah, pack. that's the thing. That's the thing. I, he's... He's going to get paid off by Reitzel here. I mean, he clearly, he sent the signal with the Michael off. He said, I'm going to give you green. You know I like Esper anyway. Just give me, ship me the Esper cards. And he should get paid off in Conflux. But 
a lot of reborn is so powerful relative to the other sets that I really think the key to this format is getting in the right colors so that you get paid off in reborn. Like, and I don't know if Brian's done that. Right. I mean, it, it feels like there, there should be a Esper drafter that's been feeding him. Yeah, somewhere yeah. along the way, somewhere within proximity to him, some somebody is. Yeah, I know. Minamura is on his immediate right. Tends to like black red. Interestingly, right. like he he actually said in his player profile that he prefers sure. black I red, but there's no way with the late lightnings coming through that he's actually drafting black red. I think he must be Esper. Minamura, what did Minamura open? Oh no, he weird. There was a drum hunter in Minamura's pack that we never saw, but that, I don't know what's going on. Please begin to ask. Pass something. All right, here is Kibler's second pack, and of course, there's a fiery fall and a wild Leotow. Resistance. <laughs> Naya, Soul's Majesty. Wow, that is. Harry Mystics. Yeah. He's even getting cut off by himself on Esper. Funny. He's going to take the Gleam. First takes Gleam. Sure. Is that better than Harry Mystics first? Oh, I'm, I, you know, I don't know. I, there was a time where a three-three three, 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 awesome, right? You know, windmill slam first pick. Not in this format, huh? No. What did you think of Sebastian Tower's comment that he thinks uh, in the Esper deck at this point, Darklit Gargoyles better than Esper Comrades as far as an aggressive flyer? <laughs> Maybe. I thought that was very telling about the I mean, sort of heightened speed of this format. The thing is, there's so many good two drops in Reborn. I think I, I want the Cormorants just because there are, there is no three three flyer for four sure. in Reborn, but there's a million powerful two drops. All right, here it goes. So, oh, Scepter, Scepter. Dominance, Parasite, Blood Spider, Blood Spider. This is a great. <laughs> yeah, this it is. It's like, can I just escape? As for Cormorants. Cormorants. Wow. If I think of Brian Cooperwood, he would just take all these cards and step yeah, away from like the table. Anaconda, like four cards back into I'll this. Just pack. hit escape. I'll take this draft. Looks like he's a guy who's after That's right. That card's absurd. Does something come back to him? Maybe. Maybe. Nice. Yeah, that's a great later. pack. There, there you go. Icy manipulator. He's got to be feeling a little better. He's like, okay, I just need to pick up a couple more of those. Right. He has to feel like signal received. <laughs> Yeah, and these guys didn't know they were going to be sitting next to each other. It just kind of so it, it looks like what tendencies. it looks like what Paul Rachel took out of that pack, and I am dragged down here. Take, tell me if I'm wrong here. We did not see the Sasslam archers. Oh sure. So totally makes sense. So it sounds like the Naya signal was also received loud and clear by Paul Rachel. Michael, <laughs> that's a signal. <laughs> that one's not possible to miss. Oh, he's looking at armories here. I think well, he's thinking about maybe slowing it down, maybe being a little more. Uh, I would take drag down. down. Yeah, drag that's down. where he's going to go. I'm already here is a little slow it, now with Reborn having sped things up. Drag down is a good quality removal spell. I think I, I agree with that pick. What do we got now? Another Gleam. Mechanist. Cumberstone. His deck doesn't seem like a Cumberstone deck. No. It's like it's Mechanist or Gleam, right? I'd take the Mechanist, but I uh, hope I got some more. He's not super artifact. He doesn't have right a lot now. of artifacts yet. And he's for the gleam. gleam. It's a good card. Yeah, leaving I mean, himself. You get to wreck people with that thing. I mean, just casting it is often very yeah. good. And leaving himself open, you know, to open open up bomb. the bombs. Yeah. Wow. But he's not gonna he's not gonna add a color. If he opens a red or green bomb, he's gonna ship it. I don't know. I mean, we're getting to it. Again, he doesn't have a huge density of quality playables yet, right? True. So, I mean, can you can you afford to sort of generously pass a bomb in the third pack that maybe you have the mana fixing to support? No. Interesting. Sludge oh, Sludge Spider. Got a Sludge Spider here, right? Just start picking up artifacts. Probably wishes he took the mechanism now. Sure. There you go. Sludge Spider. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's getting, he's getting, he's getting also thinking that that other Sludge Spider are often table because people, if nobody's people are sort of two color. Yeah. 
possible. And the other thing is that I think that the other Esper players at this table seem to be on his right. right. And right. it's highly likely that the Tower Gargoyle just is sort of excised from the draft. Right? We don't we don't know what the one right solo. What right solo first pick, but we're gonna assume it was Tower Gargoyle. I, I bet you think I bet he, he passed it? I bet he shipped it. Esper Esper so, uh, there's an Esper Pomerantz. Pomerantz, yeah. It's an interesting pick. What do you take here? Oof. I wish I took Mechanist, is what I wish. I, I think I would take the, the Comrade over take the Esper Zoa. He doesn't have anything that combos with the Esper Zoa yet. He's running out of time to get it. And right, the combo cards are in shards and in conflux. He's so. also, he also just doesn't have, again, the density. He, he, he might I be playing a fair amount of, like, even troopers or whatever comes in the third pack. i take Comrade. He's debating. Oh, and there goes the Esprizoa. There goes Esprizoa. Interesting. He's so much better off with that mechanism now. Yeah. That's a tough pick. It's a wretched banquet. Traumatic, Traumatic visions. visions. Does he need, is he desperate for removal? I mean, he doesn't have much. He just has the Oblivion Ring right now. And a drag down. And he takes Traumatic Visions. Yeah. Wants to have good mana. Reasonable. Yeah, I love that card. Dramatic vision. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. We saw we saw a lot of that in Block Constructed. Sure. The five color decks. Absolutely. Where you're using it to fix their mana, and then you know, counter double negatives when you were casting Progenitus. Next pack. Nothing. I need to think about it. No Gladstone, which combos with your Esper Zoa. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I haven't seen that one in action before. So this pack has, has worked pretty much according to plan. Yeah. Kevlar. Yeah. I mean, that's what you've said a signal to your left. You're expecting. I'm going to get paid off in the second pack. I'll put you in this color. Ship me my stuff. It'll be very interesting to see what comes all the way back around, too. There were, there were a couple of, uh, you know, two deep, three deep Esper packs that we saw. Right. You know what's funny? I bet Kibler, if, if Reitzel did take the Tower Gargoyle, he actually did Kibler a really big favor. Yes, right. that's what I was thinking. Shipping Tower Gargoyle to the left is going to create an Esper, es Esper Drafter on his left. But if he if he just stuck a Tower Gargoyle on the sideboard first pick, that's what the Mary back. Mystics comes back. That's that's what he wants here, right? 3 3 flyer for 5 is a great I'm thinking pick. about the Jesse and Bomb Giver. Really? Makes it guys really? unblockable. Ah, I've gotten the word. From the floor, right to put the skeleton eyes. Oh wow! Okay. Eyes. Again, and we talked about it. Knowing, knowing the preference and right. knowing it's, it's unlikely that he's gonna. Oh, another Gladys not to And apparently, the word is Zach Hill has an Esper deck on right and left. So Kibler's seeing these Esper picks despite having Esper two spots to his left. With so it's, it's unlikely that Sludge, Sludge Strider or the yeah, Comrades are gonna back. come back around or a Mechanist. Shadowblazer though. Yep. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, this pack is... Kibler's deck got a lot better, no question. Well, I mean, Zach Hill got a second pick. Tower Gargoyle will start off his draft. Yes. And what did he open? Uh, Scourge Devil, John Battle Mage... He probably opened a Courier Scapsule. Yeah, I think be my guess. He likes five color, too, and that's a fine five color card. Yeah. Probably did first pick Courier Scapsule. Yeah, so Zach should have a good deck. Paul should have a good deck. Kibler's deck's decent. Yeah, he'll did take Courier's Capsule first. Right. right. So his, his first three picks of this draft were Courier's Capsule, Tower Gargoyle, Executioner's Capsule. That's Ether Lich back to Kibler. Yep. That's a playable. Cumberstone. He wants that Cumberstone he's showing us. <laughs> yeah. Deck's too... I, I don't think it's right for his deck. It's my no, no, five-color no. card. Oh, no, that's a Frontline Sage. How good is that, Frontline Sage? It's, I mean, it's, it's a looter. It's, again, it's sort of a... Talks about how fast this format is. Right, that the looter is mediocre. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's mana it's, activated it's, looter. It's, it's, it's three mana mana activated. It's. I mean, I first saw that card. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, but it's it's, like, it's still it's still good. I mean, it's a looter, but I mean, I'm not shocked to see it go that late. So here's Kibler's deck. Lots more goodies. He's like kind of all in on Esprazoa here. Yeah, I still want to Cormorants. It's like he's a little schizophrenic almost because he went. The reason he the it. mechanist, which says have lots of artifacts, but he took the Esperzoa. I mean, the difference being he had he got the Sludge Strider in between, but but still, 
a little bit schizophrenic. I think he'd be better off if he'd made those in, if he'd just kind of known and gotten those more consistently. He's still a fine deck, though, right? Now, he's going to be... So, it, it sounds like the, the other... And again, there may be another Esper drafter somewhere. There should be one on Kibbles, right? He saw so little in shards. Right. I gotta believe... I mean, it could be Minamura. Although, would it... We think Minamura first picked Drum Hunter. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it, so that makes sense. No. Oh, he must have just missed that card. What did he first pick? Screecher? No, the Screecher was in that pack. I think, yeah, he, I don't I think know. he first picked Drum Hunter. Right. Well, here we get the sauce. Here we go. A lot of Reborn. Full of gold, full of goodies. Kibler looks at crystallization. Crystallization, he's got to take here, right? But he's looking at the border post. Really? The arsenal fresher. Fresher, nah, I would crystallization here. Right? Uh, I I mean, passive, again, passive. He says, he's saying, like, trying to get his artifact count up. Yep. He's trying to support the Esper Zora, the Sludge Strider. Fix his mana. Fix his mana, so he goes border post. Over crystallization. Wow. How good are those border posts? Wait, 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 over pacifism? Yeah, we talked about this. I mean, they, they, they've completely just, you know, not only have just a huge impact within their set, you know, just dealing with all the all the blades, mm -hmm. but uh, in the second pack, they, they completely change the value of cards like Parasitic Strix, Ember Weaver, mm -hmm. Dark Temper. So the pack that Kibler's getting from Minamura started life with both a Rengeful Rebirth and a Knight of Nulara. Oh, wow. And uh, and one of them is headed to the right side. And we just pass. Yeah, well, and we when we just saw Brian pass a night of New Alara oh, wow. out of this pack. Sick. So you know all those uh, yeah, Stone of Valorans are looking pretty beefy. Wow. Is he gonna get double night of New Alara? What's gonna be in here? Trace the border post. There's the night of New Alara again. A second one for right. You can easily page soul manipulation. Is, is that, that bad show blade? Yeah. Man, Showblade is so good. First yeah, strike's gonna really, be I think, the best of the blades. So I'm gonna I don't think he's going to take this whole manipulation. No, I think he needs, to, he needs a beater. He needs guys. 3-2 three, two for 2. 3-2 three, two first strike for 2 is so good. And, and that's what he does, yeah. Well, you can tell Brian's been in, you know, has some experience around the booth and around the red <laughs> cast. He's, he's so nice about making sure you see that card off, very man. clearly, right? He knows exactly where the camera is. Yeah, he's been in the booth. I mean, he's... There are not many people who've done more of these top eight webcasts than Brian Kibler. But you have, I have. I think Pakula did more than Kibler. But, I mean, Kibler was the color guy for quite a number of years. It, it, here's an interesting question. Uh-huh. Just while we're waiting for this x pack. What do you think this top eight finish does for Brian's Hall of Fame chances? It gets him into the conversation. All right, we see an art. Wow, this is this Another is another Arsenal Thresher. Big pack. Is that Wall of Denial? That's Wall of Denial, Arsenal Thresher. There's two, two border posts, posts most of colors. Wow, tough pick. I think Wall of Denial? There he goes. Yeah. Such a good answer. Especially because, I mean, he's vulnerable to large ground creatures. He's right. just an O-ring. I guess he's got O-ring Executioner's Capsule, but... And just being able in which to take them three toughness. I mean, his deck is set up to, to race. He's got some flyers. I imagine, like, you know, a Talon Trooper. He's got the Esprizella. Yeah, certainly Walt Donald does a great job of coming down, just shutting off their biggest creature and giving you the ability, especially in blue-white, you can usually crack back in the air. There's a crystallization, there's an ether cast night. Another, Another wall tonight. Wow. Which Brian snaps to the front of the pack. Absolutely. Sure. I may not win, but I won't lose. <laughs> I wasn't sure if blue white was open because he saw that death duel and then nothing. But I mean, there just weren't many blue white cards in the first in the first packs. I mean, looking over these packs, it looks like a very Naya e. Yeah, that's fair. Set of cards. There's a soul that's manipulation. Soul manipulation. There's a zealous uh, persecution. Really? I think I saw Zealous Persecution. Surely he would have shuffled that one to the front. Yeah, there it is. Don't you take that? 
Self manipulation? Yeah. Zealous persecution does crazy things. Somebody, uh, I mean, he doesn't really have a, a deck that's going to take advantage of it. He's not going to have a ton of, you know, creatures out there on the board. Taff and Infra. Well, Denial yeah. picks off a two toughness creature. A two yeah, toughness creature true. now. I would take Zealous Persecution there. I think that card is incredibly powerful. I mean, Soul Manipulation also very good. I mean, it's... He won't regret having that card in his deck. Well, with the Water Denial, I wonder if he would consider taking the, uh, the Zombie Witch Lord or something like that. If... <laughs> when? <laughs> yeah, I will, it's it's decent anyway. He can hide behind the walls, make zombie tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already got the two two uh, land cyclers. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need to fix her. I take the witch lord. Come on, <laughs> for the kids. Nope, no, go yeah, take the land cycler. I don't know about that. Witch lord seems decent. I mean, it, it gives him a, it, he gets the hide behind his two wall denials and, and deck his opponent. Right, Trace, Deny the Reality, wall, Brain Bite. Post. Yeah, we think Deny Reality, right? He's looking at Brain Bite there. Really? Yeah, there he goes. Is that better than Deny Reality? I mean, they're both blue-black card advantage -y. I thought Deny Reality was better. Uh, I, I like Deny Reality better. Uh, Brain, Brain Bite always tends to be more of a sideboard card for me. Mm -hmm. But again, maybe he figures he can slow the game down enough with the balls. Then take the Witch for it. <laughs> Storm Cold. Wow, that's a late stun sniper. Really? Yeah, that's going to go to Paul Reitzel. Yes. Wargate. Storm Cold's boom. Which he's going to take. Yep. Storm Cold's boom. See the guy with the Sigil of the Empty Throne draft deck yesterday? I heard about that. He had two Sigil of the Empty Thrones? Like eight enchantments. He Storm Cold's boomed into Ardent Plea, into Crystallization, and made three, four, four angels. <laughs> This, is, this was in the Pro in Tour. Draft. This in draft at the Pro Tour. <laughs> yeah? Nice. All right, Brian Kibler is going to be playing against Connolly Woods in the quarterfinal. Oh, no, there's a trooper. great talent trooper. That happens sometimes. If there's nobody in blue-white near you, but he's looking at the Thresher. I don't think he has the artifact count for the Thresher. You go talent trooper here, in my opinion. Just, it's, it's not that dense in artifacts. All right, that's, it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four, it's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. It's going to be a 3-3 three, three or a 2-2 three, 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 way too often. It's not worth 4 mana. Take the 2-3 two, two, flyer for 3. I, I disagree with that pick. I do not think he has the artifact density. It's the kind of card people want. They just imagine yeah. the times where it's gigantic. He's taking the ether out page. People imagine that card be in the good scenarios, but like, you have to. everything has to work out right. Just two, three, flyer for three. I think talent troopers are fine. I mean, talent troopers are better, better for your curve too. Yeah, and, and a way to win. Which I feel like his. Yeah, in particular, I think he needs flyers. Yeah, like he's going to have arch. Even if pressure comes down as a three, three or a four, four, there's going to be some giant monster on the other side of the table that can't get through wall of denial. And he's like, okay, I'll block arsenal pressure. Yeah, he is. He didn't take the. Didn't take the cormorants. Didn't take the Talent Trooper. He may come up short on flyers for for what this deck could have been. There's another and Arsenal Thresher. And <coughs> Architects as well. <laughs> Architects as well. And the uh, Twist and the Ethereum uh, A-Bomb. And he goes Thresher again? Yep. Yeah, in for a penny. Yeah, I suppose so. I just don't think his artifact counts high enough. Although, oh, no, oh, no, no, honestly, I, I kind of would take the uh, Architects of Will there. He has the opportunity to sort of lock his opponent out with an Esprizoa Architects of Will, where he's, he can put them in a Elemental <laughs> Augury lock in return. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to look at the top of your deck. There's three, you know, there's two ends and a spell. Draw a land. Next turn, let's turn Architects of Will. I mean, I, I've That's done it. That's a great it, point. You know, it's better to do it with Master Transmitter, but... Uh, Still, you know, still, still can, even if it buys you two turns, that's so huge in this game, making your opponent draw land or not draw land for two turns. All right, so you get a look at Brian Kibler, not smiling quite as much as he was at the beginning of the draft, but he's got some good cards, he's got some tools. These guys are going to go build their decks now. They've got about, they've got, uh, we're probably 30 minutes from the start of the, sure. of the quarterfinals. They're going to go register their decks, they're going to build their decks. Uh, Brian and I will wrap up the draft a little bit, and... Uh, Come back to the booth, I think. The table, that's where they're going to be playing the games. Hello again. Hey.
So the quarterfinals are going to happen after these guys build their decks. Uh, when we get to the quarterfinals, we just watched Kibler. He's going to be drafting against Conley Woods. Yeah. So Conley Woods is his quarterfinal opponent. The other match on that side of the bracket, Zach Hill versus Michael Hedke. Let me tell you, all, all these matches are, are great Hedke. in terms of also just spreading out the spreading out the faster the the across the brackets. Right. Other side of the bracket, you've got Minamura versus Gregoire, and then you've got uh, Reitzel versus Tom Ross. So, Conley, Conley Woods uh, opened some very exciting cards if he chose to take them. So, I'd be very excited to see, uh, yeah, Con- see this Conley, matchup. Conley Woods opened Caldera Hellion. Well, and, and here's this. He has a choice in that first pack between Bull Ceridon and Caldera Hellion. Oh, and then his last pack at a Lava Lanch, by the way. By the way. Yeah. He had Paleoloth in the middle one. Nice for our rares. There, like we said, there are some bombs. Christoph Gregoire, from his seat, opened Flame Blast Dragon, which I'm sure he took. Then there's a Megalonoth. He opened Flame Blast Dragon, Megalonoth, and the Witch Lord, but yeah. he's already he's he passed that, obviously. But got a Sonar Drake out of that pack, most likely. Sure. Yeah. So, we know Reitzel is sitting in Naya. Kibler is sitting in uh, Esper. Wow. Blue, white, touch black, really. Just l- listen listen to that. I mean, obviously, uh, when we talk about the set, Ola Reborn's been the bomby set. Yes. But listen to the rares that were opened in Conflux. Scepter of Dominance, Banefire, Moglanoth, oh. Rakamar, Palioth. Not much of a bomb, Palioth. Sure. But it's very good. And Obelisk of Alara. You know, I want to know what happened to that Banefire that Zach Hill opened. Because Zach Hill, we said, he got ship's tower gargoyle. Like, Reitzel... Zach Hill opens Tower Gargoyle. Uh, sorry, Ta- Tower Reitzel Gar- opens a Tower Gargoyle, ships it to Zach Hill, puts Zach Hill in Esper. Zach Hill then opens a Banefire. Does he return the favor? No. No. <laughs> he takes Banefire. So of he's Esper with a Banefire. banefire. Hey, again, remember, we watched we watched uh, LSV drafting Esper multiple times in Kyoto, and he just talked about being sort of like base Esper, splash red, splash green. Right. Uh, and, that was before Reborn, though. It was I mean, before Reborn. harder to do, but, but Banefire still works. And, Zach, and Zach Hill has, has certainly shown a willingness to, you know, play five for, for, for First pick a uh, first pick an armillary sphere. <laughs> yeah, so. fair enough. Well, we're going to go take a look at these guys while they build their decks a little bit, so we can bring you some more information on the quarters. Uh, we are going to show. We got the day one wrap, day two wrap queued up. We'll be back in the booth in probably fifteen or twenty minutes with coverage of the quarterfinals. Kibler v Woods will be the lead match, but I, all four matches are interesting to me. I want to see Zach Hill's Esper deck. See if he can get through to the semifinals where he would potentially play Kibler or Woods. I want to see Metamora. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure what he actually drafted. I have, I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of time to see Metamora. <laughs> and then uh, Reitzel's deck. Reitzel's deck sounds sick. fantastic. Again, he's got double steward, double knight of Alara. That's what he should have. We'll go see. Yeah. And then obviously there'll be a draft viewer set up so you guys can watch this draft oh, yeah, from everybody's absolutely. perspective once once the draft viewer I'm gets I'm sure this will be a much discussed draft viewer. With these packs? Absolutely. Awesomeness. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be back with quarterfinal match action right after they're done building their decks.